I've grown up here my whole life and it means everything to me. It's a little pocket which actually stands out like a little light at the edge of the coast. This is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. And like a lot of people I know, we're hoping that our children and future generations will also enjoy this beautiful community, this beautiful part of the country. We seem to be facing an onslaught of energy infrastructure. No one is looking at the cumulative impact of all the various infrastructure projects that are being forced on a really quite a small area of land, a large part of which is supposedly protected. I have personally paid for green energy. All of my energy comes from windmills. Every community has to do their share to promote the greater good. If somebody had said to me, weighing everything up, this is actually the right place and the only place, then I might have accepted that. We are all pro-green energy and, and see that it is the future. If human beings give themselves the time, we can have our green energy, but we can have it in a way that is more green, not destroying nature and the balance that we all need to survive. I'm particularly concerned about the, the green energy argument. Nobody seems to be looking at what's happening on the land, which is where the devastation is to communities, to countryside, to habitats, wildlife. We've got a lovely peaceful area here. It's my sole income as a fisherman for the last 30 years. This area in Suffolk, I believe, has got the greatest area of wildlife and nature reserves in the whole of England. Scottish Power's own estimate is that 15,000 trees will be knocked down. A structure the size of Wembley Stadium will be plonked in the middle of fields. You have fields being torn up, trenches that are 20 metres deep and 50 metres wide, crashing through an area of 9 or 10 kilometres. If the goal is to get to zero emissions, we have to start on all levels. There's no point having a contradictory policy, even if it's a bit cheaper to do it that way. We're talking about HGVs on the roads all months of the year. Working from seven in the morning till seven at night, six days a week. An additional 2,000 lorries every day for the next 10 years is going to completely ruin anyone's journey up here. People aren't going to be able to get to hospital in time. Ambulances aren't going to be able to go up narrow lanes because there's going to be so much traffic. Tourists aren't going to want to travel when they're stuck behind 20 trucks moving at a glacial pace through narrow country roads. There is a momentum in this very small area of a buoyant economy. People come for sports, they come for sailing, they come for golf, they come for a holiday destination, they come for the culture. They like to walk by the beach, they like to cycle on the roads, they like to walk in the lanes. Tourism is the most valuable long-term asset. And if you take away even just 10%, frankly, you're taking away a lot of what is the potential difference between su success and failure. And the trouble is, is it then compounds, things diminish, things drop off, the whole thing can go into reverse. EDF is, is French, SPR is Spanish, there's other companies which are Dutch. They're not interested in the effect on the villagers at all, and it's clear from every meeting we've been to. And this doesn't seem to matter at all to Scottish Power, that people's lives are going to be affected. They have said that there will be no jobs created in this area. Workers will be shipped in for the duration of the construction period. There's just no facilities for the numbers of people we're talking about locally. So there is no social benefit whatsoever. Each project goes to planning entirely separately, so there's no overview of the whole thing. It's quite frustrating really because they're obviously not really thinking about the future and keeping our yeah. environment healthy and they're just being selfish. Capitalism is a beautiful thing, but it doesn't always put an appropriate value on what it destroys. The frustration is that it doesn't need to happen. There is an answer, there's a ring main that can be done elsewhere out at sea. My guess is that that might be a little bit more expensive, but I actually don't know the reason why that isn't being pursued. Don't show me a ledger that says, uh, well, the alternative that you local residents are proposing is an extra five billion. Industrialization is going to change this community, my community, our community. What value are you putting on that?
Places like this are increasingly rare. Their value is going up every day. If we destroy these places, we destroy our planet, we destroy our lives, our health, our well-being, we are really destroying ourselves. This whole thing is a completely missed opportunity for schemes that could be world leading, could show that you can do green energy in a way that doesn't have this really negative environmental imp impact on shore. There could have been a much better solution to the whole thing had the government taken a more global approach to it. What do we want the legacy of these types of projects to be? It should be a great thing and we should be really looking to the future thinking this is a positive thing that has been done. <laughs>